Hello, so this is going to be a video on how common are chemical incidents, which might sound like a funny title for a video, but I thought it's actually worth looking at, because what you can do, and I'd recommend everybody do this if they're interested in a certain subject, is you can set up Google Alerts. And what this does is basically every day, if you want an alert, it looks at various news websites for basically anything news related to a term you've put in, and then it can give you results. So. What I've done is I've typed in chemical incident, and there's other names for this, there's also like hazardous sub, uh, substances and things like that. And what you can do is basically um, type that in, and then every day it will come up with news stories about chemical incidents, for example. And they're very, very common, a lot more than you'd think. So, when lots of people think, why would you need to EDC a gas mask or a respirator, they think, oh, terrorism, you know, there's going to be some bio or chemical, uh, chemical terrorism. Uh, biological chemical terrorism and obviously then you're going to need your gas mask for that but actually um, what's far far more likely is just the much broader term of chemical incident so this could literally be anything that causes hazardous chemicals to be released so the most common type seems to be some sort of cleaning uh, failure where somebody who works with chemicals as part of a cleaning job um, you know like bleaches and sort of you know very strong like drain cleaners and things like that does something silly with the chemicals which results in poison gas being created or you know some sort of hazardous incident like that um, and if you look at the news as I was saying for chemical incidents you'll see literally hundreds of reports from probably even your area going back over a year of where the firefighters or whoever else has to be called out to actually go to somewhere um, with their respirators on because somebody has mixed chemicals or spilt chemicals or something like that and then they have no way in the place of dealing with it. So that seems to be the most frequent one, literally a janitor or somebody else screwing up with uh, chemicals. Um, either they're not stored properly or they mix the wrong type. There's very good uh, reason why they put warnings not to mix certain chemicals um, you know, on the back of bleach things and that because there's a chemical reaction. It doesn't make mustard gas like loads of people say it does. Um, it generally doesn't even make chlorine. It normally makes what I think is called chloramine, which is kind of like an impure chlorine. But I can understand why people would say chlorine. It's that sort of thing where substance chemicals that, unless you drank them, poured them in your face, are probably perfectly safe on their own. But when you mix them, they can react with each other and make gas. So most of the chemical incidents you hear of are for that reason. Now, it goes a bit deeper than that. There's ones that, you know, are almost unknown type ones. Like, there was one recently where there was a chemical smell in a shopping centre somewhere in the UK. I can't remember where it was off the top of my head. Um, and then what ended up happening is I think 50 or so people had to be evacuated or 50 people were treated with breathing problems. But apparently there was, you know, quite a bit of chaos where people panicked and ran away from things. So, that is one of the things you need to be aware of with those sort of things that... Just if you're in a public place, you know, there is a risk, and a lot of this isn't going to be down to, you know, chemical terrorism or anything as scary as that in regard. It is simply because um, somebody messed up with some chemicals somewhere, or something's not been maintained properly or anything like that. Now, I don't think regular gas leaks are classed as chemical incidents, but that's something else to be aware of. But obviously, when there's leaking gas, that's generally more of a flammable problem, um, you know, rather than um, inhaling a poison kind of problem. So, then you also get um, drug-related incidents, which um, you might be thinking, how is that related? Well, things like fentanyl, really strong opioids, um, or opiates. Basically, um, there's been lots of incidents where police or paramedics have responded to, you know, like a problem. Um, somebody's had fentanyl, which is a really, really strong synthetic um, opiate or opioid. Um, you know, it's generally used to treat people in the later stages of life, or if they die of an overdose, it's not really a problem. I think people who are terminally ill. Um, so, you know, it's stronger than um, morphine or diamorphine, which is the technical name for heroin. Um, so it's, you know, one of those really, really strong substances. However, if you've not built up a resistance to it, and there's a load of it around, inhaling it could kill you or make you seriously ill. So a lot of chemical incidents now are related to um, drug use, where... There's sort of basically drugs that are on a surface somewhere, um, an innocent person essentially inhales them, or they get into the air and it kills a load of people or, you know, makes a load of people ill. Um, and apparently now lots of police have to have masks when responding to what they think could be a fentanyl incidence, simply so the police don't inhale it if it's on, a, um, you know, like a suspect's clothing or something like that. So that's another thing that could relate to chemical incidents. Um, you know, just drugs being in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
something like that. Another interesting thing is actually when there was that famous theatre theater siege, I believe it was, in, I think it was Moscow, wasn't it? Um, the one where everybody blames the Russian special forces for messing it up when really they didn't have any other choices because of how hard it would have been to enter the building. And I think there was lots of explosives rigged up. Um, what happened in this incident is they pumped in fentanyl in a gas form into the building. Um, so that's why loads of people died, because you can't really measure a dose properly. Um, some people weren't quite put to sleep by it, others were put to sleep, and others were basically overdosed and died from it. And also the problem was they couldn't evacuate the people to hospitals quickly enough for resuscitation once the incident had happened. However, if you look into it, as I've said before, they didn't really have a choice, because if they stormed the building, probably more and more people would have died. It wasn't like everybody inside died about half of them did or something like that, so really they didn't have a choice in that, but the point is something like fentanyl, if it gets into the air, can be very hazardous to your health, especially if you're not a drug, a uh, drug addict who's, you know, used to it, because the fatal dose for you would be much lower, because your body's not built up an immunity to it in a sense, sense or a resistance. So there are two of the major things I can think of messing about with chemicals, or not proper chemical uses, or for example, um, drug uses. So what other incidents could there be? This is one I've covered before, but chemical fires or industrial accidents. So if you live basically near train tracks or a busy road, there's always a chance that there could be a train or like um, a lorry, you know, or a truck carrying um, hazardous chemicals. Um, and there could be a fire or a derailment or a crash, anything like that, which could result in them going into the air. So if you're in a local enough area, obviously that smoke is pretty contaminated and horrible. And there has been several really big major scale incidents where things like this has happened before, which has had to result in entire towns or villages being evacuated, because, you know, they are really in harm's way when this happens. So again, if you live close to a major road or railway line, maybe it is worth just having a mask and filters as a backup. And similarly, if you live near a big factory that produces chemicals, um, if there's an industrial fire there, um, that could be really, really dangerous, obviously, if you think of all the things in the factory burning up. Um, obviously, with Chernobyl, that was an incident with a nuclear power station, but I think it's a similar kind of concept. If you think of Chernobyl and understand that, obviously, reactor number four basically exploded, and that explosion fire sent lots and lots of radioactive material out into the atmosphere and the surrounding area. If you think of the same thing happening with a chemical plant, yeah, it's not radiation or fallout, um, but it is the same sort of logic that a big vat of chemicals could set on fire and put out toxic smoke. That's not really um, too far-fetched. And sadly that did happen with Bhopal in India. If you look up the Bhopal gas disaster, one of the worst man-made sort of disasters in history. I think it may have, you know, be considered actually the worst in history. But basically a plant that made pesticides. Um, what ended up happening there was the staff weren't trained very well. Um, they had lots of this chemical, I think it was called MIC, um, which is, I think, a cyanide-based um, pesticide. They had lots and lots of it stored in underground sort of reservoirs underneath the plant um, for storage until, you know, it was loaded into lorries or whatever else. And what ended up happening was um, water got into it where the workers weren't taught properly, you know, not to mix water with it and how to do all the safety shut-off procedures. Um, there'd also been lots of cost cutting with other safety precautions like chemical burners if the stuff did get out into the air and things like that. So what ended up happening was water got into the underground storage tanks, um, it caused a reaction, um, the poison gas basically poured out of everywhere possible because of the pressure build up and it went all over the surrounding areas, initially killing lots of people and injuring lots of people and generations on they're still having problems with birth defects and disabilities where, you know, the poison's got into some people, it's invisible, like with a lot of radiation poisoning type incidents. Um, it's invisible, you know, that the person who's come into contact has any long-lasting health effect, but their children suffer for it because it's damaged the genetic code or whatever else in the body. So, again, if you lived near a big chemical factory, I would certainly um, have a lot of sort of masks and filters to spare for that reason. But hopefully this gives you some idea of a lot of the things that could result in chemical incidents whether it be, you know, somebody just messing up with uh, cleaning chemicals, um, mixing the wrong ones together by accident, you know, putting the wrong quantities somewhere, or again, you know, some sort of small fire in a cleaning cupboard that re uh, releases poison gas everywhere. It could be drug stuff, like I've said before, like fentanyl powder or very strong um, drug powders, you know, everywhere, um, which results in anybody breathing it in being contaminated. Or it could, of course, be a Novichok type incident, you know, one of those sort of things, as much as I don't think, as you know, I've gone into before, 
everything adds up on that story, but yes, it could obviously be that somebody's tried to poison somebody, and that poison's got into the local area as well. And as I said, if you live near a rage mo uh, road or railway, um, there could be a derailment kind of thing, a car crash, a train crash, whatever, that results in chemicals being spilled or burning and going into the atmosphere. And worst of all, it could be a massive chemical plant that sets on fire. So hopefully, you know, it's not really a scary video, I don't want to um, scare people with this. But, you know, if you do set your Google Alerts for chemical incident, I think you would be surprised if you've not really thought about it, just how often these sort of events can happen almost anywhere. And as I said, there is, especially if you're buying a surplus one and a couple of spare filters, a relatively cheap way you can give yourself much better odds. Now, if it was a bopal sized disaster, maybe one of these alone wouldn't protect you, because I think the MIC could damage through skin contact as well. I'm pretty certain it could. I think they had several people killed through being splashed by it, not necessarily inhaling it. However, um, for the most part, if you're evacuating somewhere, having something like this is going to give you much better odds than not having anything at all. Um, I've also done other videos in the past where I've talked about, you know, if you're in your house and there is some sort of disaster and you can't leave, what you can do to minimise risk, you know, like closing all the doors and windows, uh, putting damp towels around the edges of doors and windows to stop gas getting in, or things like that, you know, it's far worse to evacuate if, um, you know, it's really contaminated outside and you can relatively cut the air off inside. That's, you know, one of the things you could do. Um, also, if you are evacuating, make sure you're not obviously going downwind of wherever the chemicals are, because if you're doing that, obviously, um, you're increasing your exposure time to all these sort of things. But, as I said, chemical incidents are far more likely than you may think. So it might just be worth thinking, you know, a bit of preparation of what you could do if something like that happened where you work or live, um, you know, just in case of what you do. As I said, I keep a mask in my car now, not this one, it's my FM12 with a filter. Um, the reason being that, you know, I can store it very easily in my car where it doesn't get in the way. I've got so many masks, why not? And, you know, if I'm ever in my car and an incident happens, it could even be I'm just on a dual carriageway or a motorway. Um, you know, there's a traffic jam as a result of a, you know, like a tanker carrying something that's crashed and it's put some horrible thing into the air. And, you know, you can then put the mask on and then set your car to recirculate the air rather than draw fresh stuff in and you're protected to a much better degree than if you hadn't got a mask. So, food for thought, as I said, I'm not trying to scare anybody with this video, but it is worth paying attention to because I have had people say, no, you'll never have a need for a gas mask at all, it's just not something you'd ever, ever need. There's not such a thing as chemical incidents. Well, there obviously is, um, but remember, Google Alerts is very interesting. If in you know, interesting if you're into this sort of thing.